Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Supreme Vintage Cube Draft. We have a piece of power to start, so can't really complain to that. Mox Emerald is certainly not the best Mox, but it's not bad. And then given that we have the Mox Emerald, I think I like taking the Tropical Island here. There's not much else that's that good. I don't think Storm is that great, so Mind's Desire doesn't look amazing. There's Control Magic. Um, yeah, let's just take the Tropical Island. This opens up Oka, which is one of the best cards. Also opens up Uro. There's a Splinter Twin. And I honestly have been pretty impressed with the Twin combo in this format. A lot of players don't have instant speed removal. They do have, in, like, Counter Magic, but that is an option. Otherwise, there is Echo of Eon does a pretty strong card. Chrome Mox, Ancestral Vision. Could take Chrome Mox plus Echo. Could just take the Twin. Could take Chrome Mox Twin. Maybe it's Chrome Mox Twin. Yeah, let's go with that. I haven't drafted a Twin deck yet in this format, but I think it is pretty strong. Now I could take a Brainstorm. Burst Lightning is fine. Spellseeker is fine. Definitely taking the Brainstorm. I don't think we're really a Primeval Titan deck, probably. Um, Relic is decent. It is a cheap artifact. Let's take the Spellseeker, though. If we don't get Ancestral or Time Lock, it could end up being bad, but it's such a good card. All right, now we get Oko. We have the Tropical Island, so I think that is worth it. And then, honestly, I think we just take the Sylvan Library then. This card is excellent. Yeah, in a format where people are not pressuring your life total, just being able to trade life for car cards is a great deal. Now we take, can take Black Lotus, excellent. And then I think just the Deceiver Exarch. Spire Bluff Canal would be good too, but we already have the Twin. Yeah, let's just go with this. All right, now there's Miscalculation, Tireless Tracker, and Urza. And Simic Signet. Actually, Simic Signet looks reasonable. Maybe we go Signet Urza here. Yeah, Miscalculation is fine, but I think I like uh, taking the, the stuff that helps us to develop. If that was a counter spell, then I would take it. Now there's Ignoble Hierarch. The blue cards here are terrible, which is a bit sad. There's Wheel of Fortune if we want to try and go down that route, but we don't have that much acceleration right now. I do think we want the Hierarch. It adds red, which is nice. And then we could take Chain Lightning, or we could take Wheel of Fortune. Let's take the wheel. This card is pretty good. Nice. Mox Ruby. Excellent pickup. And then I think we just take the Zealous Conscripts. It's another combo with Twin, and it's also a decent card on its own. Season Pyrometer is fine. Mystic Confluence is pretty good. Dark Confidant is excellent, but like would require us to splash another color. Let's just take the, the combo piece, though. Now we get Ponder Vista, I think. There's also Faithless Looting. But I think these two are a little bit better for us. We want to be heavier blue if possible. Yeah, I'll take the Vista and the Ponder. There's a Time Twister. But we again, we don't have Narset. We don't have the best combos with the, the draw seven. Wasteland is not that good. Magda's not that good. Cultivate's not that good. Honestly, this pack is pretty weak. I think we just take Trigon Predator Time Twister. Actually, Predator's, Predator's quite good. But then, yeah, I think Time Twisters are somewhat unfortunate second pick. Now we take Time Walk. That's a very good one, of course. And then it's an interesting pick. Expressive Iteration is excellent. Dreamer Cascade is good fixing. There's Shark Typhoon, Wheel of Misfortune. I think we just take the Expressive Iteration, though. Although, we really do need some more fixing. Actually, yeah, I think we should take the Dream Root Cascade. I really do want to be able to play these green cards. And we don't have that much fixing yet. Ooh, now Mana Dream Wooded Foothills. That's a great pack for us. Brazen Borrower is good. Mystical Tutor is pretty strong. We can find Time Walk. Arbor Elf is decent, but I think we'd rather just take the Mana Drain and the Foothills. Yeah, let's go with that. Now there is, let's see, Arid Mesa doesn't help us yet, although it could get there. Toski's not very good. We definitely want the Force of Negation. Then it could be Treasure Cruise. We don't have other ways to use the Graveyard at the moment. And it's good with Wheel of Fortune. We could just speculate on the Arid Mesa and hope to get there. Could take Chandra. We do have Lotus. Actually, yeah, I think I like taking Chandra here. This card's pretty good. It's especially good on turn one. Now we get Mana Vault, Wandering Fumeral, I think. Frantic Search is fine. I guess Frantic Search can help fix our mana, but I think these two cards are probably just going to be better for us. Now we get Steam Vents. That's a huge pickup. Wooded Foothills can grab that. 
And, ooh, Ravelmaster, Uro, and Layla are all very good. I think I like... Well, so, yeah, there's also Inspired Idea, but I think Inspired Idea is worse than Uro. I think Ravelmaster versus Layla, that's really, really close. Layla's probably slightly better. Yeah, I'll take the Layla, but it is very close. Now we can take a Verdant Catacombs, which gets Tropical Island. That seems fine. There's also Venser, Cryptic, Riftwing. I think I like just taking this, though. Imperial Recruiter doesn't look that great here. Yeah, let's definitely take this. And then Telerian Academy is not great in this deck. We're a little bit light on cheap artifacts to really enable that. Could take Venser. I don't think Riftwing Cloudscape's very good. Yeah, I guess we just take Venser. All right, there's the Tinker, but we don't have a Tinker target. Breeding Pool is good. We already have Tropical Island, but I think we still want that for the fixing. And then we could take Eternal Witness to pair with the Time Walk, but Double Green's a little tough. Tinker's not going to get there. Probably just is it Signet. Yeah, that's a pretty solid pickup. Ooh, two mocks in to finish it off. That's great. I would love Thieving Skydiver as well. Portend and Lightning Bolt are also good. Uh, Noble Hierarch is good, but let's definitely take the mocks. These are like the two worst mocks we could get, but we have two draw sevens, so just having a ton of mocks is going to be very good for us. All right, honestly, I think we can just run it like this. Let's see. If we did it, let's sort by color. So heaviest blue, of course. T 12 blue, 4 green, 5 red. So this gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 blue sources. We actually don't have Mock Sapphire, unfortunately. So I kind of would like one more. For red, we have 1, 2, this is not get red. Three, four, five, six. That's okay. The double red ones could be tough. We'd also have black lotus and chrome mocks. And then for green, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I kind of want to cut the forest, but then prismatic vista can't for a mountain. But then prismatic vista can't get green. I think that's still worth it though, because if we only have four green cards, although we do have hierarch. Yeah, all right, let's run it like this. The double red cards could be a bit tough to cast, but I think this is still fine. We have Splinter Twin with two combo pieces. I think that's enough. Uh, yeah, this deck seems sweet. See you in round one. All right, we have our round one opponent with our sweet Teamer Twin deck. We have a lot of power. We have a couple draw sevens. We have a combo finish. Everything we need. This hand is bad, though. I think we can do better than this. We have time walk, but no acceleration is not really acceptable. This hand seems better. Hmm. We don't have red mana at the moment. Verdant Catacombs can only get Forest or, or Tropical Island. I think we keep and put back Layla, though. Once we find one red source, we can play the Wheel of Fortune, and that should be pretty good here. I think we're going to lead on this just to make sure we don't draw our one Forest. Not going to force some negation this. If we knew we had the red source for the turn two wheel, I might force one of the Moxen, but here I think that's not worth it. Grim Monolith. Okay, they have a lot of mana. We could force the Grim Monolith. If they ramp into Consecrated Sphinx, I'll wish that we had countered the Grim Monolith, but we can counter a lot of their things um, that they're ramping into. Okay, let's go land. Mox. Mox. Pass. Not going to play any... Deceiver XR shenanigans when we have Hardcast Force of Will available. Shark Typhoon. Alright, well. Well, Force of Negation. They have two cards, so it could be Force plus a blue card, but then they would have had no cards. Time Twister. Okay, do we want to just jam this? I think the answer is yes. I, it's not amazing, but I think it is worth it here. Now we can go, ooh, good draws. Um, do we want to play Brainstorm? I think so. Let's go Brainstorm, then Time Walk. Off the Chrome Mox, probably. Okay, a couple lands we don't need, so let's put back the two islands. 
play Vista, play Chrome Mox, Pitching, Spellseeker. If we play Wheel of Fortune, we are going to lose our, um... Oh, wait, no. Let's just pitch the, spe let's, the Splinter Twin. Right? Yeah, let's just pitch the Splinter Twin here. We're not going to be able to combo them, but I think that's fine. Crack this for blue. Play Time Walk. Draw Wooded Foothills. That's not a very good draw. What can Spellseeker get? See, I think we want to get a red source with this. We can grab Steam Vents. And then we could Spellseeker for something or just play Wheel of Fortune. I think it's better just to fire off the wheel here. Sort of popping off over here. We have a huge mana advantage now. And tons of live draws. We could play Oko. We could go Mox into Chandra. Oof. Not the best draws here. A lot of land. They have Echo Vions and Time Twister of their own. Okay. Well, luckily we have a bunch of stuff in play. So, yeah. I mean, if they want to fire off the Echo Vions from their graveyard, be my guest. We don't have the combo anymore, but we still have a lot of ways to win with Layla. Chandra, Oko. Even just Zealous Conscripts beating down is not the worst. He swings for four. Fast Bond, okay. That's pretty good. They can dump a bunch of lands into play now. Rafelos, interesting. That's not a card you see very often. All right, I think we're gonna wanna pay all the life here. We need to make something happen. They have a ton of mana. Although if it just lands, then that's pretty bad against Echo of Yons. Okay, nice. We draw some spells. Let's pay all the life. Play out our Mox. Play out our Trigon Predator. Um, we can give our uh, Trigon Predator haste with the Zealous Conscript. That seems pretty sweet. And then we want to hold up Hardcast 4, so we need to play an untapped land from our hand. Island. Zealous Conscripts. I guess let's uh, tap the Noble Hierarch just in case. They kill it or something. So they have essentially infinite blue and green mana. We could kill their fast bond or we could kill one of their moxen. I think it's better to just take them off of red mana. Um, all right, and then let's pass to our opponent. We have force of negation available and we have a pretty good clock. Hierarch, okay, that's fine. They untap the monolith, that makes it seem like they're just gonna pass. Or they might fire off, yeah, I, okay, they just pass, sure. So we'll untap. All right, so we'll draw our cards with Sylvan Library. We are on at a somewhat low life total now, so I don't know if we'll be, we're gonna be able to Pay a bunch of life. Hoping to hit Chandra or Layla or Oko. So let's draw our two. Ooh. Okay, let's draw. Let's put this back, but then pay for life for this. And we can... Let's jam this. There's Urza. This makes a huge dude. And then we have two counter spells available. No need to spin Urza. We're just going to play tap land and attack. Blowing up their Grim Monolith. 
And with two counter spells at our disposal, I don't think they're going to be able to win this. We'll see. All right, we'll pass. All right, they're making a move here, but I don't think it's going to be enough of a move to fight through two counter spells. Whole lot of mana. They could have something with a cast trigger, Crater of Behemoth, okay. That would be lethal, but we have the answer. Mana Drain, then we can have mana Force of Negation for the counter spell. Spell Pierce, okay. Alright, sweet. So blue green dudes. They have multiple draw sevens. Time Twister is our fast bond is good against us. If they have multiple draw sevens and we have multiple draw sevens, that could be an issue. But I don't think we can really change much. I mean we could bring in an extra land, but let's just run it back like this. Gonna be a lot of draw sevens going back and forth in this matchup, so we just want to make sure we can put as many things as possible onto the board every turn. I think we just play turn one Spellseeker here, pitching Brainstorm. I wish we had Ancestral to find, but it's fine. Oh no, hopefully they don't just have turn one Time Twister. I put Arbor Elf under that, Draga Tree Speaker, okay, that's fine. No land, that's sort of funny. So, that's an okay draw. I think we want to grab Time Walk with a Spellseeker. The next turn we can play Time Walk, and then the turn after we can play... Um, Wheel of Fortune, probably. We could also get Mana Drain, but I think I'd rather just get the Time Walk. And now we have a lot of good draws. I mean, basically any spell. We could play Spell plus Time Walk, and that would set up really well for Wheel of Fortune the following turn. They level up the Tree Speaker, presumably. I really wish we had a way to kill this. Grim Monolith, okay. Mox Jet, sure. So let's just play Time Walk, Mox Jet. And then pass. We could have also played Wheel of Fortune this turn, but I think it's better to get the Wandering Fumeral down. That gives us double red and just gives us a... I mean, this is a very legitimate attacker in a lot of game states. We have m way more permanents on board, but because the this adds two and this adds three, they still have seven mana. They actually have more mana than us somehow. But we get to go first with the, with a the new hand and hopefully draw some form of counter magic or something. There's a non-zero chance we just win, too. We could draw Lotus, Conscripts, and Splinter Twin. So we'll swing for one, pass back to ourselves. <laughs> Very good draw. So we'll dump this into play. We could use it now. In fact, I actually think that is worth it. It gives us a lot more access to colored mana. Okay, we draw the combo. And we have double red, so we just need to hope that they don't have an interaction this turn. They have a fresh hand, of course. So that's a little scary, but I still think this is a solid position. Play that, play this, and pass turn. We could also just main phase tap the Grim Monolith, actually. Yeah, that seems good. Let's do that. They know we have the Deceiver Echart now, but this just cuts them off of so much mana. This pause makes it look like they could have force. Right, tap your Monolith, and pass turn. We have so many more permanents than our opponent does. I guess we just punch them for one. Alright, so 
They probably need to play something. They have four mana, no blue mana. So my guess is we're going to get a good window for Splinter Twin. This deck seems busted. We have so much fast mana. Ooh, Talarian Academy is a disaster. All right, well, we're probably just going to lose now. I, actually, no, that's that's an overstatement. But Academy plus Fast Bond is, like, the best thing they could have had there. They were very constrained on mana, and now they're not. Lion's Eye Diamond. Wow, they went from having almost no mana to just having infinite mana. Time Twister's gone. They could have Echo Vions. Dak, Faden, okay. We have three red sources, so even if they steal Signet, we still have the mana for Splinter Twin. And they're down to one card, so they need their last card to be a Kill Spell or a Counter Spell. They do steal our Signet. All right, Phyrexian Metamorph copying, I don't even know. That's a sort of weird play. I guess they can copy Spellseeker and find Time Walk. Yeah, that's, if they have Time Walk, we could be in rough shape here. They can copy our Spellseeker and search up something. It's weird that they're thinking here. It seems like this is a pretty easy spell seeker. I mean, if they are worried about just... I guess they don't know we have the combo. If they just think we have only lands, then they could go... Copy Deceiver Exarch, untap Derogatory Speaker. Oh, they copied. Is that Signet? Very strange. All right, well, we just win. No, we will not pay four. It doesn't matter. They have no cards, so we don't need to play around Days or Force of Will or anything. Just jam our combo. We even draw the Conscripts. Okay. Don't need it, but I guess it's nice to have access to. So, after a couple draw sevens, we successfully assemble our Splinter Twin combo and win the game on turn four. Crazy that this is turn four and there's this many permanents in play. That's sort of awesome. I'll see you in round two. All right, we have our opponent for round two with our sweet Teamer Twin deck. We are on the play. Uh, we cannot keep this. Our mana is just too bad. If we had a green source, we could play turn two or turn one Sylvan. I would keep it, but that's not good enough. Oh, man. All right, down to five. This hand's bad too, but we have Brainstorm, so we will keep it. Ugh, oh, that is pretty gross. All right, so let's keep put back these two bad lands. And then, do we want to turn one Brainstorm? I think I will Brainstorm here. If we hit, like, Sylvan Library plus a Mox or something, it could be really good. Okay, ugh. Oh. Just a bunch of mana. All right, let's just put back two lands. And then we'll play this stuff out in case they go for a quick time twister and then pass turn. Then we're going to draw a land, and we can honestly just jam Zealous Conscript, potentially. It's not an exciting play, but it is a, tur a clock, and it means that if we ever draw Splinter Twin off the top, we just win. They have a Lotus of their own. We can just steal their Lotus. That seems pretty good. They can't spell pierce, they can't daze. They could crack their lotus to play force of or to play like mana drain or something. But that's still fine. At least we're getting their lotus off the table. Repeal. Okay, solid play by the opponent. Take three. This is looking pretty bad, though. We're definitely behind. Uh, we have nothing going. I mean, we have a 3-3 three, three down, but they have a Lotus, so there's a lot of really scary things they could do, and they have a full hand. Richard and Port is not a threat. Can't 
And we taught the explainers one. Okay, that's fine. Let's get this down to fetch because we just don't want to draw any more lands. We've already gone through our brainstorm. I guess they could port our land and take us off of uh, off of Zealous Conscripts this turn, but that's not the end of the world. If they just use the port and don't advance their board, we just get more draw steps, which is good for us. Evoke Mold Drifter. That's pretty weak. I mean, it does put them up a card, I guess. And if we're not doing much, then that does matter. A lot of good draws here. Layla, Oko. They don't do anything. Okay. We're just going to jam the conscripts. They probably have a counter spell, but we need to get the counters out of them somehow. Then they can't play their Brazen Borrower. Just not Mana Drain, please. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it's not good, but we have Ponder to try and dig for a draw seven. And we have our manas under us very well. All right, they pass. <clears throat> Tap steam vents, presumably. Deceiver Exarch, good draw. Um, hmm. These are interesting. I think we just fire off the Time Twister this turn. Yeah, let's just play this before they get a chance to untap. No counter spell. That's good. Land, Mox. Mox. We could go either Layla. Yeah, let's, let's play Layla here. A lot of good things we could hit. This means we can't hold up Venser, but I think that's okay. And then if we brick off the Layla, we might just play Sylvan Library. Mana Drain. Uh, okay, that's bad. I think we are just going to drop the Sylvan Library into play. And then they're going to do something terrifying, but we have Venser. So we can bounce whatever they play. Let's see, they have eight mana though, so this could be dicey. They could just jam Sunder and Titan. Do your worst, opponent. We have more mana and we have Sylvan Library down, but you have seven cards in hand and a lot of mana also. Fractured Identity Yourself. And that's not too bad. It's not good, but we can bounce it with the Venser so they don't get to draw any cards off of it. They just cast the 3-1 and pass. Not a problem. Ponder, great draw. Okay, we... Don't, hmm, these are interesting. I honestly think we might shuffle them. Force of Negation is a great card, but we don't have it available this turn. Trigon Predator is not amazing. Signets of Brick. So honestly, yeah, I think we do just shuffle here. We draw the Force of Negation anyways. Let's main phase bounce this because I really don't want our opponent to draw any extra cards. All right, bounce this and pass. And it's a close game. They have a better creature in play. We have more mana. They have more cards in hand. We have a force of negation. We also have very live top decks, but I'm sure they do too. All right, we'll take three, not a problem. Good spell. Looks like they're tapping our steam vents again. That's fine. We are pretty constrained on blue mana with only three blue sources. Oh, interesting. They go after that. All right. Time walk. Well, not a super exciting time walk turn, but I think it is still correct to jam it. They could counter and we don't have force of negation available. But I think it's still worth it to just cast this. This is a format where you sort of need to... Like, you can't really 
bide your time and set up for a good turn because you just never know what's going to happen. Like, your opponent could combo kill you. They could play draw seven. They could mind twist your hand. Um, so you just sort of need to, like, play your things and impact the board as much as possible every turn. Hopefully there's hardcast force. Bummer. What modes are they doing here? Counter, counter, and draw. All right. Well played, opponent. So that's essentially just a cryptic command. And we'll pass. Given that they had missed a confluence, I obviously wish that I'd held up force negation, but I still think it was correct to jam, given our information at the time. Creeping Tarpet. That's a very real threat. We're down to 10. Now we're down to two swings to unblockable creatures, so we need to find Wheel of Fortune or something impactful. Chandra would be fine. We could minus and kill the Brazen Borrower. Ignoble Hierarch is not very good. Although it does give us more mana at least. So it, it means that like Wheel of Fortune is a more alive draw. Hit you for three and pass. We could also draw Splinter Twin and put Splinter Twin on the Venser. And just have like a bounce every turn basically. So they probably just animate the Tar Pit and hit us down to four. And then we have one draw step. Uh, I think it is worth it to counter this. It's not a very exciting counter, but we're very constrained on blue mana. And this lets them draw a card. So they animate the tar pit, and then we got to rip something good off the top. We have a lot of good draws. I mean, we have so much mana in play, which means we have less mana in our deck. Wheel of Fortune. Yep. They should be tapping our red sources, I think. Okay, that keeps us alive. It's not very exciting, but we can trade it with the Brazen Borrower and not die. We put them to eight, which is low, but probably not low enough. We're out of cards in hand. We don't have any burn spells or anything. Yeah, it's going to be tough. We need to top deck something. We also might just be dead. If they have a way to kill our Trigon Predator and still have enough mana to animate the Tar Pit, then we do die. Swords to Plowshares. Oh, all right. That puts us exactly dead. Good game, opponent. That was actually, that was a really sweet game. We did mold a five there. Wandering Fumarole just lands on top. Okay, so we were going to lose that game either way. Play, they're playing Esper Control. Swords to Plowshares is very good against our combo, unfortunately. I think we still just run it back, though. Yeah, let's submit like this. It's sort of funny how few one mana spells you often have in this format. But that's fine because you're just playing mocks and then playing two and three drops on turn one. Best case scenario would just be like land, four mocks in, mana vault, time twister. And then we just like basically start the game with tons of mana. Turn one Layla is not bad either. Sets up a really fast clock and also draws you cards every turn, essentially. Turn one Black Lotus, Layla, attack, hit Wandering Fumeral and play Fumeral. Pretty good. Honestly, turn one Trigon Predator is also quite strong. Turn one land, Mox, Mox, Trigon. Then you're basically guaranteed to have a mana advantage for the whole game. Ugh. This is a keep, but it's not very good. It's basically just because of the force of negation. The fact that this is a Simic Signet and we have no Mox and is pretty bad. But we have all our colors. We have the force. I think this is good enough. Okay. Turn one, Port Go is a pretty weak start. Opponents deep in thought. 
Do they want to use Simeon's spirit guide to port down our dream root cascade? If they do, if we pitch something to the force of negation, it's probably going to be Spellseeker here. Could be the Predator. But this card is, like, situationally very good. It's not great if they have no Moxon. Ooh, Lotus. Um, do we just fire that off? Five, it being the Time Twister. Yeah, I think so. Let's grab blue red. Play Lotus. Crack it for blue. Simic Signet. Time Twister. Then we can play Mox Sylvan. Pretty good. No force of will, but we have a huge mana advantage and we have Sylvan Library, so you gotta like this position. We can jam Urza next turn. We do want to find another land, ideally. Because if we draw land, we can go um, Urza with a Mana Drain available. They just pass? All right, so they're going to tap down one of our lands. Okay, they let us go to our draw step. That's sort of weird. Let's just pay all the life here. And then shock. Don't love shocking here, but I think it is correct. Urza. Okay, that resolves. That's excellent. Now we can manage drain their play. They could. Oh, they sort. Okay, good play by the opponent. They sort here. Uh, we don't have force of will in the deck, so no point in brainstorming in response. This just happens. Then let's play our ponder. Okay, Chromox isn't great, but Chandra is quite good. Burden Catacombs cannot get red, though. So we don't have double red. All right, I think we, these are bad, then. Let's just shuffle them. We draw our second red source. We'll pass. So we both have six cards in hand, but we have three extra mana, a 3-3, three, three, and a Sylvan Library. Not that Sylvan is that good anymore. We're not going to be able to pay much more life, but we can still just take the best card and then shuffle away the two we don't want. Balance. Ugh. Okay. That's actually not too bad. It just... Because we have so many not, like, other stuff. It kills our dude and makes us sacrifice a land. So that's pretty good for two mana. But given how far up on resources we are, it could have been a lot worse. It's really clutch that we have these artifacts. They definitely should not wasteland us here, but they probably will. Yep. <laughs> We're still, like... This makes... Five to three is better than four to two. Or, sorry. Yeah, 5 3 is better for them than 4 2. They're behind on mana either way. All right, we'll see what we draw here. We could play Layla. We could hold up Mana Drain. If we draw Mox, we could go Spellseeker. Okay, Chromox is actually pretty good here. Although, maybe that's just better. Yeah, let's just put these two on top. Top, top. Then we go Mox Ruby. Play this. Crack it for blue green. Spell Seeker Time Walk. The next turn we can play Layla with Mana Drain available, which is really strong. We can also set up our Layla hit so we are guaranteed to hit something good. Okay, I don't think we need these mana sources, so let's just go Vault on top, Mountain on top. Layla. Oh, wait. Okay. I We should have just put the Prismatic Vista on top. I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll attack with everything. Then we'll just play the Mountain off, off the top. And we can hold up Mana Drain. And if they don't do anything we care about, then we can um, just play Deceiver Exarch. Potentially even Deceiver Exarch, untap land, brainstorm. We could also port their land, but I think it's better to just hold up Mana Drain. 
They're missing land drops. Or no, yeah, the, the wasteland was a really weak play on their part. Okay, let's go. End of turn deceiver. Tap your tundra. Now we could just win here if we find the twin. Ideally, we stay above six because that would mean creeping tar pits a two turn clock. There's the twin. All right. So top, top, land. Splendid turn with mana drain available. And that is game. Untap target permanent, you control. Hopefully our opponent doesn't make us click through all of this. Looks like they are, fair enough. All right, there we go. So pretty good start. We are 2-0. I'll see, oh wait, that was, oh wait, never mind. All right, well, we'll run it back. We're playing balance, that's a good card to know about. We're on the draw, um, but seems pretty good. We'll run like this. IXX Buddha XXL. Um, yeah, this is a good keepable hand. It's not great. This funeral being tapped is actually pretty annoying. It means we can't go mana vault into mana drain. I think we might just play the funeral tapped on turn one and not play the mana vault. Ooh, okay, good draw. If we have to use the force of negation, what are we pitching? pitch any of these cards at all. So we really hope we won't have to use it. Hopefully they just pass. Nice. Given that we have at least the third land, I think we just go draw go almost definitely. We'll see what we draw. Sea Okay, yeah, let's just go draw go. And the Sea Check is the card we're planning on pitching. It is a combo piece, of course, but this is, we're not in the part of the game where we're trying to combo right now. Thoughts as well. That's really good for them because they have mana available to counter our mana drain. And we'll see. If they play Counterspell back, I think we just let their Thoughts Seeds resolve. I don't love it, but... Oh, it, it, that works for us. Okay, that's good. They pass. We could just jam Urza into Mana Vault if we want to. The Seed Retro untapping Mana Vault is actually pretty nice. With Add a Mana. Hmm. Do we go for it here? So we could, the most conservative line is just to play Mana Vault off this one mana and pass. The most aggressive line would be to play Deceiver Exarch. We could just jam the Urza. The problem is if we play Mana Vault, then we have to tap the Mana Vault to play Urza. But it's really high upside because we could potentially go Urza in Time Walk. They probably have a counter spell, but then we have Deceiver Exarch to untap our Mana Vault. I think we're going to go for the line here. We'll go for the maximum, maximum outside line. If they have a counter spell, they have a counter spell. We can counter something back on their turn. We could also just play Mana Vault Time Walk. Honestly, that seems worth it here. I'd much rather prefer, I'd much prefer them to counter this. Okay, that does resolve. So just pass, and then we can jam Urza without tapping our Mana Vault now. Okay, so we'll play that. We're constrained on blue mana here, which is a bit unfortunate. Let's play Yerza. We can pay for mana leak or anything like that. If they have mana drain, that's a bit bad. Okay, that resolves, nice. And now we pass, holding up mana, or force negation, which we can hard cast.
And in turn, turn, we're going to cast the Seabrax Arc, tapping the Mana Vault, and then trying to untap our own Mana Vault, just to get the, the X Arc down. They are making a play here. Could be balance. Okay, so if this resolves, we lose our board, and they discard one card. I think it's worth it to keep this around. So let's go tap this. Tap this. Deceiver Exarch, untap land, play Force of Negation. Yeah, that works. And if they have a counter spell in here somewhere, then they're discarding their hand to the balance. And we're basically top decking, but we have a one year funeral, so we're slightly ahead. Untap. This. Force Negation. And then we have five power on board. We don't have any cards in hand, but we have a lot of live top decks and we can spin Urza. We could also just swing for four with the Fumeral. That's almost a two-turn clock. If it was a two-turn clock, I think that would be correct, but given that we cannot kill them in two turns, I think we should at least on the first turn spin Urza. Oh, they just concede. All right, well, that's pretty sweet. Uh, we are two now. I'll see you in the finals. All right, we have our opponent for the finals. Fighting for the trophy with our sweet Teamer Twin deck, but we are on the draw against Dirk714, unfortunately. Huh, this hand is pretty fair. Did our opponent keep? They did. I think we can do better. Not having a single mox is pretty terrible. Alright, this will keep and put back the Splinter Twin. Hopefully we can draw untapped land. Or another Mox. Mana Vault. Okay, fair enough. Nice. So we have four mana. We can just play Time Twister next turn. I think we might want to fire off the Brainstorm, though, before playing the Twister, just in case we can find a land or more mana. Narset. Well, that pretty much ends the game instantly. That sucks. We can't play Brainstorm or Time Twister now. If we draw land, we could just animate the Fumeral, which I think is the play. Oh, come on. That's frustrating. All right, play this and pass. Narset is disgustingly good in this format. Soul Ring. So now like I said, do they have the draw seven? It looks like they do, yep. Well, actually, that was not a bad draw. We could just win if we top deck Zealous Conscripts. Or, uh, well, land into Zealous Conscripts or Deceiver X Arc. Most of our draws are live. Land lets us attack with a Fumeral spell we can cast. They hit Portend, okay. All right, let's animate Fumeral. Honestly, I think we just hit them for six. Put them on a three-turn clock. We're not gonna kill their Narset. We don't have any cantrips though, so Narset doesn't even do that much anymore. And let's kill their Soul Ring. All right, they're, they're under a real clock here. Go down to 11. They have tons of cards and tons of mana, but if they're just holding a bunch of counter spells and more mana and card draw and stuff, but no ways to actually interact with creatures, we could potentially pull this off. Palace Jailer. Okay, that is pretty bad. They portend us. Okay, we're probably dead here. Really strong draw from the opponent. They chose to not shuffle, so we're drawing some bricks. Probably just land. Yep. I don't think it's worth it to trade the Fumeral with the Palace Jailer, so we'll pass. Fumeral is pretty good, but it's not good against creatures, really.
They're drawing two cards a turn. Yeah, basically we need to just top deck. I guess if we drew Zealous Conscripts, we could become the Monarch if they somehow have nothing. They pass. That's sort of weird. They or they attack. So now we get to. Uh, let's tap this correctly. Not tap both of our red sources. We win this race. We also get to become the monarch. Yeah, this is just a terrible attack by them. I guess actually being the monarch doesn't help us that much. Bolt. Wait, oh, I think this doesn't work how we want it to. Wait. It's a 1-4. Yeah, okay, so they do get to kill our thing. Because now it has three damage on it, so... But this is going to switch it back, and we can't switch it again, because then it'll die any time we switch it. So, this does kill it. Still not going to concede, though, because we still have the out of top decking Zealous Conscripts or Deceive Retrarch, and then not having an answer. Okay, Dak Faden, if they target us, I'm going to concede. Because they can take out... Yep, they found the line. All right. Don't want to show them that we're playing twin. So, they're playing Jeskai Control. Their deck looks sweet. Uh, very, very good. Narset is a huge issue for us. But we don't really have any answers to it other than just countering it. This deck is actually very light on counter magic. Just Force of Negation and Mana Drain. Okay. I think we keep this and just play turn one Layla. Oh, we can actually play turn one Layla. Yeah, so we wait one turn. We have a uh, force of negation available to counter some of their fast mana. I don't think I would counter Mox. Yeah, let's not counter an off-color Mox. Ugh, come on. Okay, definitely countering this. That would be pretty much game ending. Now we get to go Signet into Layla. Hopefully he'll land. Or if we draw a red source, we can just play Chandra. This does not get red. It just gets blue-green. So let's go Signet. Layla. Hopefully hit land. Nice. All right, we're in a pretty good spot here. They have the mana advantage because of their Moxon, but we have a Layla down, which could, should be pretty good. They do have Palace Jailer and Bolt as answers to the Layla. But then we have Chandra, so we have a good follow-up either way. They don't shuffle, that's scary. Then they play Trinket Mage. Okay, Trinket Mage is not that much of a problem. I mean, it's, it's a decent card, but it can't block the Layla very effectively. We probably just play Chandra Minus on it. They take their Lotus and pass. Pretty bad play to not play the Lotus there, in my opinion. Although, I guess they haven't seen all our draw sevens. So let's grab this. Tapped, and then untap. Fumeral was a pretty horrendous draw. Let's start by just attacking with a Layla. If they want to jump block, that's fine. Brainstorm. Okay. Probably worth playing. It means we can't get the Chandra down, but I think it's still worth it. We also might be able to get the Chandra down if we find a Mox. Nice. Ooh, Time Walk 2. All right, these are very good. So let's put back... Hmm, so let's think about this. We're going to put back two cards. We're going to draw one for turn. We're going to hit the other off Layla. So I guess we want to put Chandra under the Layla. So let's go Chandra on the bottom and then land. Then we go Mox to play around days, Time Walk, Fumeral, pass. Then we draw the land, take one, that's fine. Attack with Layla, and then we can even hold up Mana Drain, post Chandra. That should be pretty game ending. Chump block, go land.
Play Chandra, and this plus actually even adds more value with Layla, too. Uh, do we want to cast this and just have it in play or hit them for two? No, let's just hit them for two. So now they're dead next turn, right? This Layla will go to an eight power. No, no, we can put them to one next turn. But with Mana Drain available, we can even animate Fumeral, so yeah, we should be good here. We'll let their portend resolve. Saving the Mana Drain for something that impacts the board. Ancestral Recall would be an interesting decision. Same with Time Walk, but... A cantrip is not hard. We're definitely not countering that. There's the Lotus. Do we want to counter that? No, let's let them have the Lotus, I think. Yeah, let's let them have this. Okay, we'll counter this. Alright, so we take down game two. Palace Jailer is really good against us, though. If they just go turn one land Lotus Palace Jailer, there's not much we can do about that. I guess we have Force Negation. Uh, do we want to bring in a land? I don't think so. Let's just run it back like this. For the trophy. Good hand. Well, it's literally just all mana, but we have tons of mana, which is the most important thing early on. Let's just dump our hand on turn one and then hope to draw some card draw of some sort. Ancestral Recall. All right. Mox. Mox. This is a hilarious draw. We just have literally only mana. It's not a good draw at all, honestly. But we have a lot of very live draws. If we top deck any spell in our deck, we can cast it. Draw, a draw seven would be the best. They have a soul ring. Into show and tell. Well, that might just win. Yep. Can we top deck something right here? Yes. Actually, let's play the wheel like this. Okay. Got some good ones here. We can tap down their Blight Steel if they don't have counter magic. We don't have counter magic. We're also out of red mana, so we can't play Chandra, unfortunately. So let's play. We have two blue sources, so we can, let's see, if Trigon Predator is a blocker, so even if they could, so if we could play Predator plus Deceiver Exarch, we can survive even if they have one counterspell. Alternatively, we could play Ponder and dig for Time Walk or something. Hmm... It would be so much better if we could find Time Walk. This is a close decision. What are the chances they have a counterspell here? They just drew seven new cards. They didn't discard a single counterspell. We could look at theoretically six cards, seven cards, but we couldn't actually look at seven because we can't play both cantrips and play time walk. Okay, I think we need to just play the predator line, unfortunately. And the next turn when we have all our mana, we can go for go for something more proactive. So we're almost definitely not dead this turn, but if this the Super XR gets countered, we're in bad shape. Okay, resolves. So we could if we find Splinter Twin, we just win now. They have a lot of mana though, and they just we just gave them a new hand. Jeez. Triple Mox. I guess I can't complain. We had triple mox too. We can blow up something with a Trigon Predator. Unfortunately, Blightsteel Colossus is indestructible, so we cannot kill that with a Trigon Predator, but we can take them off of some of their mana. And then we can have a bunch of looks at finding Spellseeker for Time Walk, or just drawing the Time Walk, or Splinter Twin, Zealous Conscripts wins. We have a lot of live draws here. And the Signet's actually really nice for filtering white or black mana into relevant colors. To fairy bounce the sea Brex arc, I guess. Although that, that's not too bad for us. If they plus, 
Also not too bad. Okay, they do bounce the Deceiver. We cannot play it at an instant speed, but we can kill their Teferi here, probably. It means we're not getting a Trigon Predator hit in to kill an artifact, but that's fine. So let's start by trying to kill their Teferi. They have the Bolt. Okay. That's too bad. Let's play Ponder. Manager it? No, these don't do it. So let's shuffle. Okay, let's play Brainstorm. Yuck. Put back some lands. Then we play Verdant Catacombs to shuffle away those terrible lands. Uh, we could play Chandra and Plus, hoping to hit Time Walk and then have Deceiver Exarch available if we don't. We could, so one other interesting line is we could play Chrome Walk, pitching the Deceiver Exarch in case we hit exactly Zell's Conscript, but I think it's still better just a Plus here for uh, for cards. Sylvan Library, oh wait, I forgot we can't play stuff up against the Teferi. Okay, well, we still get the Chandra down, now let's play Deceiver Exarch. Untapping Mana Vault and pass. The problem is now we, I mean, they might just be able to kill us. And even if they can't, we have to chump block with our Deceiver X Arc, so we don't have a clear path to victory anymore. Uh, do we want to put this Crow Mox into play? I think we do, just in case we draw a. Um, in case they draw a, a draw seven, we don't want that to be in our deck still. Pass. It's not impossible that we lose, but it's going to be really hard. I mean, and we might just die. Okay, they have the swords, so they do take us down. Really close game. We we put a bunch of stuff into play, but could not find the zealous conscripts that we needed. So we die exactly there. So close to the trophy, but it is what it is. Our opponent's deck was very sweet. They had a lot of Mox in, Dak Fade in, Teferi, um, a quick Blight Steel. Let's pull up the deck list. This was our Teamer Twin deck, and it was quite good. Uh, we could not quite get the trophy. We ended 2 1, but it was definitely a strong deck. Uh, we didn't have great answers to Blight Steel Colossus, but we had tons of fast mana, multiple draw sevens, and a lot of really good threats that closed out the game quickly. The Twin combo was strong. We actually never drew Oko. That would have been an answer to the Blight Steel. Um, the draw sevens overperformed, or or maybe they're just really good, and I should be drafting them more highly. The lack of counter magic was an issue. Only having two counter spells in the entire deck meant that we were sort of soft to combo stuff. And I think we passed one miscalculation, but that's I think it. So we had it's not like we were not drafting correctly and undervaluing counter spells in that regard. Um, but definitely a pretty sweet deck. I think Teamer is a really good color combination in this format. Um, Black does give you discard spells, which are good, but. Um, Getting, like, access to Oko and Sylvan Library is excellent, and then Red has tons of good threats that are good at closing out the game, especially if you accelerate into them. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.